a great deal of good to be done, done by average Americans who take interest in how to make government more responsive. That's why Public Advocate of U.S. exists. It exposes and publicizes the hypocrisy of what really goes on behind the doors of government power. Public Advocate was formed by a group of former congressional aides who saw from close range just how the powerful liberal establishment promotes policies that defy the wants and needs of the average American citizen. It takes skill and daring to grapple with the power brokers of policy, but Public Advocate has led the way to successful lobbying for a generation of conservative activists. Let's see how Public Advocate rallies the troops, wrestles with the enemy, and wins converts. Here's the Executive Director of Public Advocate, Jean Delgadio. Jean, how do you do it? Kathleen, we've learned some lessons. I've surprised myself to see what an impact we can have on public policy. Thousands of people have participated in our dramatic public events, and millions have seen or read about our message for America. Can anybody use your techniques to help make a difference? I certainly think so. Anybody can go out in their hometown and do what we've done. The key is to do it right. That's where public advocates' experience can show the way. Can we hear about some of your success stories? All right. I want to begin in the fall of 87. The highly respected federal judge, Robert Bork, had finally been nominated to a seat on the Supreme Court. But the liberals had a lynch mob out to get him. The national news media repeated daily the distortions and outright lies spread by Bork's opponents. That's when public advocate was called. What happened then? We wanted to devise a way to put the liberals on the defensive. We did it with a technique guaranteed to attract media interest. We created a political satire. I have some videotape to show you. Criminals Against Bork was our name for the unique group of demonstrators who mocked Senate liberals outside their offices. Criminals Against Bork established conservative street theater. How did it work? We dressed a band of protesters in prison uniforms. We made signs with ironic slogans about how Judge Bork was tough on criminals. Then we held a news conference on a public sidewalk on Capitol Hill in Washington. Did you get a lot of coverage? Criminals Against Bork made national network TV. We had a good turnout of TV cameras and still photographers. Because it was so colorful. It was a good visual event. That's important. You must have attracted a lot of attention. Reporters are a lot more interested if you can stir up some outrage response. I love counter demonstrators. Here's one left wing dirt ball I played off to make our point. Take a sign. Yeah. 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 Truck drivers are against four. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right on. He can't quite figure out what to make of it. We even put a B in Ted Kennedy's bonnet. We brought criminals against Bork right up to the front door of the U.S. Senate where they couldn't miss us. Well, Gene, that's quite a story. You sure put together a creative bit of street theater. How did it play on the news? We got terrific coverage. Cox Television Studios in Washington broadcasted on their news show, and many other television news shows broadcasted to their audiences, and we reached millions with our message. Let's see that report now. Criminals against Bork! Criminals against Bork! Criminals against Bork! Criminals against Bork! Today at noon, criminals against Borg gather on Capitol Hill to speak out against Robert Borg, President Reagan's nominee to the Supreme Court. In a statement announcing the rally, criminals against Borg said, this will be the first time that the criminal element will have an opportunity to express their feelings against Judge Robert Borg. Well, we got to make sure we keep that Supreme Court, you know, being really liberal. We don't, we don't want the Supreme Court to, you know, get anybody like work on it, yes, throw please. it against us. You know, that scares the living out of us. In two cases, Robert Bork ruled against criminals. This goes against the belief held by some that criminals' rights are more important than victims' rights. In coming out against Bork, criminals want continued, meaningful representation in the court. Killers have rights. Killers have rights. That's ample. Thank you, Judge Bork doesn't believe it. Representative spokesman for the thousands of criminals released from jails 
thanks to favorable court rulings, made this statement. Gathered here to urge their friends to reject the nomination of Judge Robert Mark to the Supreme Court. In fact, in fact, if Mark had been on the Supreme Court a decade earlier, we might be festering in dirty jail. Boo! An oppressive prison. Rather than being out on the streets today. More victims, more crime! More victims, more crime! More victims, more crime! Thank you, Joe Biden! That's good coverage. They played it straight. You can get good coverage from news reporters if you give them good stuff. Public controversy makes a story. Good visuals make TV. Be dramatic. That wasn't the only time he used the criminal satire, was it? We got lots of mileage from that idea. During the height of the 1988 presidential campaign, we staged criminals for Dukakis in Philadelphia. That made the 10 o'clock news on Fox TV. Good evening, everyone. Here's what's happening. It started more than a year ago. It ends on Tuesday, the race for the White House. Today, Bush sounded much more like he was in a two-horse race. Running as though I am 10 points back, and I need your help. What happened in Philadelphia? Liberal Governor Mario Cuomo was in Philadelphia stumping for the Dukakis campaign. Here in Philadelphia, some Democratic heavyweights campaigned on Dukakis's behalf. New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley and New York Governor Mario Cuomo joined local Democrats like Tom Folletta at a Dukakis rally in South Philadelphia. Cuomo's comments about crime played right into our hands. You can make it appear that he's soft on crime because the people didn't know that he has the toughest drug program, the toughest anti-crime program in the United States of America. Well, some people dressed like convicts marched in Center City today proclaiming that they are criminals who support Dukakis. The demonstrators actually opposed the Massachusetts governor and his state's past policy of allowing some prisoners out on weekend furloughs. The group believes uh, Dukakis would not be tough on crime. Except